G'day guys, I hope you're doing super, super well. Look, today we're going to be going over a pretty broad couple of topics here. The main one is really what you should be looking out for in the digital marketing space for your business, things you should be aware of, things you should be testing, things you should be trying to stay ahead of the curve because there's just so many opportunities out there in the digital marketing space right now. Uh, for example, Facebook's making a lot of changes. Uh, they're canning a lot of projects that were long-term projects like uh, Facebook podcasts, so many different things and uh, some slight little changes to uh, how we do targeting in Facebook advertising as well as I'm going to touch on TikTok but you probably already guessed that because if you've been following me for any length of time you know I'm very bullish about TikTok at the moment and the opportunities that we're getting for not only myself my brands and uh, most importantly our clients and on that note let's get into it. So right off the bat, uh, I think I'll start with creative. Creative is just the topic of conversation for just about any digital marketer and any business who's taking um, their business online and maximizing their results. And one of the ways that I have found in probably the past five to six months, specifically with TikTok, but also uh, consequently with Facebook and Instagram, is how you can produce more content and creative faster than you ever have. And that's going to be reaching out to creators. So I've spent a lot of time, I mean a lot of time, uh, developing a, a network, a small network of creators here in Australia, in the UK, and uh, we're working on building the same thing in the US. Now, creators in the definition that I tend to define them as is not an influencer, right? So influencers, as you probably already know, have hundreds, maybe even millions of followers on Instagram and you're paying an arm and a leg to get a shout out, let alone some video content that you can use royalty free. A creator is, to, to me, is just someone who has a great eye for creating video content for products or services and understands how to formulate that in an ad. They understand that it's going to be used for an ad and they understand the facets of an ad. Now, not all creators have to know how to create an ad. For example, we would uh, formulate a script for a client um, and ensure the client's happy with it and then send that script directly to our network of creators and say, hey, would you be comfortable doing this? What would you be looking at quoting? And um, off the back of that, they would give us a quote and they would forward us a video, go back a couple of times, maybe one review max, really in the grand scheme of things. Then, hey presto, we've got some new creative to run as an ad, not only on TikTok, but also on Facebook and Instagram. So just imagine if you sat down for 15 to 20 minutes, you wrote out a new script for an ad uh, that was you know, following something as simple as the ADA principle. You can Google that acronym attention, interest, desire, and action, standard marketing um, uh, structure. And you write down a script for your next ad and you send it out to a bunch of creators and 10 of them get back to you saying yes. You pay 100 $150, $200 a video, whatever you can negotiate. And hey presto, you've got new ads pumping out at a higher frequency than you ever had before. That's been such a game changer for not just our clients, but just, you know, business owners who I speak to, you know, every other day, it's been really, really productive for them. And it's been a breath of fresh air because I totally get it. Some people just don't want to show their face for whatever reason, or they're not comfortable doing that, um, or they simply don't or do not want to allocate the time to produce creative content uh, for their ads or even, you know, their organic posts and whatnot. So that's been huge. So that's going to be my first massive takeaway for you is uh, reaching out to creators. Now, uh, if you don't already follow me on TikTok, huge plug, huge shameless plug right here. Uh, but search me up on TikTok, Rebel Lachlan. And there is a video somewhere at the sort of bottom of my feed. It's called um, Simple Ways to Make Money Part 3. And it's actually directed towards creators. Have a look for that video. And what it's gonna show you is how creators operate. And the simplest way to reach out to creators is to simply find their TikTok account, follow them, comment on their stuff so they, they follow you back. 
so you can send them a direct message just fii if you don't follow each other you can't send each other direct messages like on instagram and what you're looking for here is really just that they are confident they have great delivery on the videos on their TikTok page and you're dropping into their DMs say hey man I'm looking for you know some content around this product do you think this is something you could do you say yes it's beneficial to jump on a call really quick as well if you want to uh, just so you can sort of get to know the person build some rapport and then ask what they would want to be paid for this you know how do you want to be compensated and uh, you know negotiate it down to a monetary amount that's fine for you like for our clients, we negotiate uh, on behalf of our clients anywhere from $150 a video, most recently all the way up to you know $1,200 per video for some bigger accounts for some kind of more innovative videos. But you can start as small as like $100, $150. You've just got to put in the work. Now, um, just to set some expectations, if you really wanted to do this correctly, I would reach out to 100 creators if you're based here in Australia, which I'm assuming majority of my audience are, um, or in the UK or in the US, then reach out to 100 creators on TikTok, comment, get them to follow you on the um, on the context that you're going to have a chat about getting some content made by them for your product or your service. And uh, what you're kind of looking for from that 100 is a conversion or a response rate of at least 10 to 15 percent. So out of 100, 10 to 15 people will reply to you. And, um, and you can start a conversation with those people. And again, that's 10 to 15 videos that you don't have to do anything for other than send a script, other than give them a quick review of the first draft video that they send back to you. And there you go. You've got a ton of new videos, probably more than you've ever had before. <laughs> so that's working insanely well. And I really recommend it because creators, the creator marketplace, even you can Google that one, TikTok creator marketplace. You can go on there as a business as we do a couple of times and find these people directly, or you can um, organically scroll around and find these people. But that is just such a great resource because I know you and just about everybody, every business owner is like, oh crap, I've got to create another ad. Oh, oh crap, I've got to, I need new creative, I need new posts and all that kind of stuff. And you know, this is just such a great solution to solve that problem. So first point is creators. Now I'm just going to flick back over to another topic about um, Facebook in the way that we are currently going back to an older way of testing interests. Now, as you may have already noticed, I'm quite a big fan of starting a campaign with broad targeting. Now, broad targeting is great because it gives you a bigger audience, especially where the majority of, I guess, our clients, we're not advertising to a massive audience for the most part. And so we start broad, maybe with just a couple of parameters around age, and um, we let the algorithm do the the testing for us uh, for four days max. One of the things that we've started to test on a more granular level is uh, having at least three, maybe four interests that don't necessarily make sense to target for a product-based business or a service, right? For example, uh, the solar brand that I have a vested interest in one of our best performing interests isn't people interested in solar. We don't target people interested in solar at all, as a matter of fact. But one of our best performing interests is walking, right? Don't ask me why it works. One day I just woke up and said, you know what? This solar in targeting interest is too expensive. The CPMs are $60 on a good day. It's too expensive, too competitive. And we're just trying to get in front of homeowners. So what are other homeowners interested in? Don't ask me why I thought of walking. <laughs> I just chucked it in there and it was a big size audience. I think that's why I chose it, a big size interest. The long and short of it is, I remember exactly that day. It was around about September last year, 2021. And I tested walking. I think I tested Ikea as an interest, although it's a little bit smaller. Uh, I think I also tested business as the the one of the bigger interests and we tested four interests as I'm still doing today with a few other client accounts 
And one of the things we found is, one of the things I found was that it's totally possible to find these little secret hidden gems that you never would have found if you're not thinking outside of the box. Because one of the things I've found, especially when I've audited some accounts recently, is some people just get stuck in their ways and I don't actually think it's their fault. Like I don't actually think it's your fault at all. It's just, it's hard to remove yourself from what you've been doing consistently, especially if you've known it to work in the past. It's hard to be like, okay, well, let's try something completely different. It's hard to get out of that headspace. But what I would absolutely recommend for you is to grab your best performing creative, you know, maybe some creative you've gotten from a TikTok creator, and test four different interests that don't necessarily make a hell of a lot of sense to you. So for example, if you're in mortgage broking, test people interested in business, test people interested in the beach, test people interested in camping, just for the sake of it. It doesn't have to make sense. You're just hitting a different segment of an audience and you're still letting your creative or your ad effectively do the qualifying and filtering for you. Even though you target people interested in camping for say, wanting to refinance their home, just as an example, uh, no one's gonna click on that ad. Even if they are interested in camping, they're not gonna click on that ad if they're not interested in refinancing their home. But the caveat is that that interest that you target may be a hell of a lot cheaper and a hell of a lot more profitable and therefore more effective than the current interests or, or even lookalikes that you're targeting, right? So keep that as an ace up your sleeve because that's been working insanely well for me personally with some of my accounts and um, obviously some of our client accounts, um, which I can't divulge too much information because I do want to keep a couple of those secrets close to my chest. <laughs> but yeah, so test out some different interests. Now, to flick back over to TikTok advertising, um, I'm assuming that probably the majority of you haven't really gone too aggressive into TikTok advertising, paid TikTok ads. Uh, maybe you've pulled over your best performing Facebook or Instagram ad over to um, TikTok and it hasn't worked. And I would say to those of you who have done that, um, it rarely does work. You need to create TikToks. You need to create TikTok videos um, as opposed to ads, generally speaking. Um, that's a separate conversation, but if you want to solve that problem really quick, go and find creators, um, as I mentioned earlier. One of the things, a couple of things I have found with, and a, and a few questions I've gotten as of late, is um, when you start a TikTok campaign, it's very common for it not to spend for two to three days. So people think something's wrong, um, but in the reality, you actually just need to leave it <laughs> for between three to five days, and then all, and all of a sudden it starts spending, which is interesting, I guess. Um, some ad accounts I've noticed, um, you have to spend a minimum of $20 a day and other ad accounts, other client ad accounts, I've noticed they have to spend a minimum $50 a day. So what that looks like remains to be seen for you. And then, you know what, um, uh, with, I think my ad account, you know, we can spend as far down as $15 a day. So there's a bit of range there, <laughs> uh, but you won't know until you actually kind of find out. And one of the things I've found with uh, especially using paid ads uh, to generate new content on a side note is I'm running an ad at the moment. I think I've actually paused it because um, I'm trying some new content on my organically on my TikTok page. I never thought I'd been interested in organic content, but here I am. But one of the things I'm doing is I am running an ad asking people for questions, uh, their marketing questions for their business. And what I do is for, for new content ideas and to post new content is on TikTok, there's a function as I'm pretty sure there is on Instagram Reels where you can reply to that comment or that question with a video. And hey presto, you've got a new video content. One of the things I'm doing with that is I'm collating all of the questions I'm getting and just telling what they're sort of relevant to. And then I plan to create um, and add maybe even a lead magnet around that. So I'm validating the content or the ad or the lead magnet that I plan to use in the future. So if you go into my TikTok profile, Rev Lachlan, you scroll down to a post probably halfway down where it says, um, ask your marketing questions, I think it is, <clears throat> on the actual thumbnail of the video. And you see there's, you know, I think it's maybe nearly 90 comments and the majority of them I've responded to with a video. 
and um, its content organically for my TikTok page. And on the ba- on the back end, I am uh, using those uh, plan to tally them and, and create more content for ads and whatnot around that, and maybe even a lead magnet, as I mentioned earlier. Now, additionally, with that is so if you didn't know, Facebook released uh, Reels, so Facebook Reels for a page. Those are working insanely well. So if you've got, uh, I'm pretty sure the max time is 30 seconds, right? But if you have any content that is a vertical format like Instagram Stories and you haven't used Facebook Reels, you haven't posted a Facebook Reel uh, for your Facebook business page, do it and try it out. And I I personally guarantee you it will be the most people you've ever reached on your Facebook page for potentially years. I know that's how it's worked in, in so far for me. And it's been a really cool experience for me personally because I take my TikToks, most of them aren't actually less than 30 seconds these days, but I do intentionally try to keep them under 30 seconds so I can repost everywhere. But I take my TikToks and if they're less than 30 seconds, I post them on Facebook Reels um, with basically the same captions, just no hashtags. Then I post them on Instagram Reels and then I reshare that Instagram reel to my Instagram story most of the time. And then I upload that to my YouTube channel and YouTube automatically converts that to a YouTube short, which if you weren't aware is YouTube's direct competition to TikTok, short form video. Facebook reels, since I've used that format and YouTube shorts, since I've used that format, have been the most people I've reached in a very, 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 very long time, right? So in terms of, and again, I can't believe I'm saying this because I'm just, organic's just been a really interesting topic for me over the past sort of maybe two to three months since I've been really understanding it, mostly for TikTok. Um, you can very easily get discovered for the one piece of content that you're posting on TikTok, if that makes sense. So imagine you create a 30 second video on TikTok and then you post it on Facebook Reels with the same caption. Then you post it on Instagram Reels with the same caption. Then you reshare it into your Instagram story so you're present there if you want to. Then you upload it to your YouTube account as a YouTube, well, just upload it. And if it's of the right length, less than 30 seconds, I think, it's actually YouTube uh, Shorts is actually up to 60 seconds. But when you upload it, it will automatically convert that to a YouTube Short. And the majority of um, those videos that I upload get anywhere from, uh, I think the biggest one is about 4,000 views, where the average on my YouTube videos, I think there's value in my videos, but <laughs> they just don't reach people. But anyway, um, it's a labor of love, but like exponentially more people reached, right? And so to be discovered and get that sort of awareness from one video, mind you, from one um from one, I guess, exposure of energy for use of a better um, term here is phenomenal, right? And so it's such a great use of your time, such a great, efficient use of your time. And so that would be one of my big takeaways for you as well would be to, when you start to post this shorter form content that is, you know, the TikTok ratio, vertical format, and if it's below 30 seconds, um, post it across to Facebook Reels, test that out, post it over to your YouTube account if you have one, if you don't, create one, um, and it'll automatically be converted to a short. Post it into your Instagram Reels, you're probably already doing that already, and then post that into your um, Instagram story. Uh, I think the only resistance I think I might have to some, for me saying that from some people would be, well, I don't wanna have the same content across all platforms. In my experience, the majority of business owners aren't posting enough full stop. So for that to be resistance to posting across all platforms, to me is ridiculous. Like if you're posting four videos a day consistently, not even that, let's just say two videos a day, which the majority of business owners aren't, myself included, mind you, then who cares if you're posting across all platforms? People will most likely just follow the one platform and stick to that. They're not, the majority aren't going to follow all four or five of your platforms and you know eat up that content. So I hope that makes sense. 
But anyway, this has gone on long enough, my friends. I really hope that's been of value. Um, I've got to shoot off, but if you have any questions whatsoever, do me a favor, follow me on TikTok. Um, I want to engage with more business owners on TikTok um, because I feel like I do have a lot of value to give over there. And that is a huge growth potential for a lot of you. Um, please take it seriously. I'm not going to badge you too much about TikTok and why you should be on there, but you know, just take my word for it. Like it's just such a massive opportunity. Now I want you to make the most of it. So with that said, um, I will see you in the next episode. Have a wonderful rest of your day.